Bye, everybody. Just so everybody can get the scriptures, uh, we're doing uh, First Kings, second chapter. We're going to start with verse 26. That way y'all can go ahead and get it. We're going to read all the way to the end. Pharisees. Pharisees. I'm sorry. Go ahead. First Kings, chapter 2. And we'll start with the 26th verse. Let me do the phone. We're already having a few issues pausing, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my Wi-Fi. So y'all just hold on, okay? All right, welcome, 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 welcome. We already started the recording. So uh, we are about to get this thing started. We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna ask Sister Gwen to pray us in today. We're doing some different things. Then we're gonna turn it over into the hands of praise and worship. For again, the chapter, we're in First Kings chapter two, and we're starting with verse 26. And we'll read all the way to the end. So it's about 20 verses. Go ahead, Sister Gwen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come before you this evening. Thank you for allowing us to make it this far in the day. Thank you for allowing us to make it this far in the week. Lord, please bless all that are present. Bless all that had a desire to be here. Bless the teacher of the evening. Uh, bless us to apply the word that we hear today throughout our week and throughout um, any experiences we may have related to this evening's word. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I'm going to play um, something about one of my favorite artists. Um, hmm. She transcends time to me. Uh, you know, it's stuff that's still relevant today. But um, I know it's kind of been kind of rainy. When it's rainy and dreary, I'm always glad. I, I feel like sometimes this can be downer or something like that, but God is good. So I'm gonna, hopefully I have, have the ability to share my screen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Looks like I got it. Looks.
to the host. Amen, amen, amen. Let's everybody get their scriptures together. We're going to start it out. We have 20 verses. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About three verses a piece. We're going to start out with uh, Caleb. We'll go with Shanana, Gwen, Montgomery's. Minister Kelly, and then we'll end it with Brother Vanoy. If he can read. If he can't, let me know. And then I have Minister Kelly finishing out. First Kings chapter two, start with verse 26, all the way to the end. I got it right here, sis. Oh, you want us to wait? Uh, you can go and then Caleb will go behind you and then Gwen. And, then and until ever, oh, and until ever though the thief, I mean, the priest said to King, this is the King James Version, get thee to Anathoth unto thine own fields, for thou art worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David, my father. And because thou hast been afflicted in all, wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abithar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spake Concerning the house of Eli and Shiloh. You said two verses. A piece. One more. Three. One more. Okay. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonijah, though he turned not after Absalom, and Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord and caught hold on the horns of the altar. Is it my turn? Yeah, let Caleb go. Okay, yes, ma'am. King Solomon <clears throat> was told that Joab had fled to the tent of the Lord. It was beside the altar. Then Solomon ordered Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, to go strike him down. So Benaiah entered the tent of the Lord. It said to Joab, the king says, come out. But he answered, no, I will die here. When I reported to the king, this is how Joab answered me. I'll read one more. Uh, yeah, go back and read 28. When the news reached Joab, who had conspired, Adonijah, though not with Absalom, he fled to the tent of the Lord and took Hold of the horns of the altar. Okay, Gwen. Sorry. I don't know what I, I think I'm losing it here. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um verse 31. Then the king commanded uh Benaniah, do as he said, strike him down and bury him. And so clear me and my whole family of the guilt of the innocent blood that Joab shed. The Lord will repay him for the blood he shed, because without my father, David, knowing it, he attacked two men and killed them with the sword. Both of them, Abner, son of Ner, commander of Israel's army, and Amasa, son of Jether, commander of Judah's army, were better men and more upright than he. 
May the guilt of their blood rest on the head of Joab and his descendants forever, but on David and his descendants, his house and his throne. May there be the Lord's peace forever. Um, so so Benaniah, son of Jediah, went up and struck down Joab and killed him, and he was buried at his home out in the country. And the king put Benaniah, the son of Jehoshaphat, in his room over the host. And Zadok, Zodok, Zadok, the priest did the king put in the room of Abijah. And the king sent and called for uh, Shema and said unto him, Build thee a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and go not forth thence any weather. Um, and I'll be version at 37. The day you leave and cross the Kidron Valley, you can be sure you will die. Your blood will be on your own head. Shammai answered the king, what you say is good. Your servant will do as my lord the king has said. And Shammai stayed in Jerusalem for a long time. But three years later, two of Shammai's slaves ran off to Akish son of Mecca, king of Gath, and Shemaiah was told, your slaves are in Gath. Yeah. Uh, verse 40, the King James Version. And this he saddled his donkey and went to Ashish at Gath, in search of his slave. So Shemaiah went away and brought the slaves back from Gath. When Solomon was told that Shemaiah had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had returned, the king summoned Shemaiah and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and warn you? On the day you leave to go anywhere else, you can be sure you will die. At that time, you said to me, what you say is good, I will obey. Brother Benoit, can you read or you want me to have uh, let us scale and finish it out? I'm just trying to get my headset together. For some reason, it won't connect back. Uh, Brother Noah, it's going to be kind of loud in here. 16. Right? 16. We in First Kings. 43. Chapter no, two. I'm talking about the chapter. Chapter 2. First Kings chapter, chapter two. two. Verse, we're on verse 40. What was 43? 43. To the end. For some reason I cannot get this thing to. Now go ahead and listen because I, I can't get my headset to connect. Okay. I have Kelly read the rest of it. Okay, 43. Okay. Why then did you not keep your oath to the Lord and obey the command I gave you? The king also said to Shema, you know in your heart all the wrong you did to my father, David. Now the Lord repay you for the for your wrongdoing. But King Solomon will be blessed and David's throne will remain secure before the Lord forever. Then the, then the king gave the order to Benaiah, son of Jehoda, and he went out and struck Shema down and he died. The kingdom was now established in Solomon's hand. All right, all right. I know that's a lot of reading, but I I got a question for you. 
and it's the title of the lesson. The question is, are second chances wasted? Are second chances wasted? And so the reason why we're going through this and we're talking about what happened is that Solomon really pretty much throughout these scriptures, he gave some second chances. He was told by David what to do and who, who was supposed to be out of there, but yet he still gave some second chances. And so my question is to you, have you ever been in a situation, even before we begin to talk about Solomon and what he did, have you ever been in a set situation where you gave a second chance? And I'm not going to ask you if it went bad or wrong. Y'all can tell that part. And you felt like, I don't know if this second chance was wasted. Y'all talk to me. Talk to me, somebody. God gave me a second chance. And I know it wasn't wasted because not only do I long after him every day, I seek his face. Amen. That was good. Anybody else? I don't think second chances are wasted. I think it's just an opportunity to redeem yourself or show show yourself maybe for some type of improvement or unfortunately it may not I mean it may just show that that's who you are but I still don't necessarily think they're wasted Pick it, pick it back on what Gwen said uh, they're not wasted as long as your eyes open as long as you got breath in your body you always could got chance to Make it right. In other words, scripture say, pay your vow to the most high, which you what you made when you was in trouble. Uh just because you uh you prolong it or you uh, uh uh delay it, it's not wasted as long as you got breath in your body. You know, we still got time to get it right. It's a whole lot of things I I need to get right. Script a songwriter said you need to clean up what you messed up. And started my life all over again. We still got a chance to get it right, long as we got breath in our body. I praise God for the breath in my body. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank God for second chances. Um, he's given me second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. And he's still giving me chances. So um, I thank him for it. You know, it all depends on how, how we, what we utilize with our second chances, with our chances. You know, do we take advantage of the moment or do we continue down that destructive path? Um, that's our choice. And I believe it's okay to give other people second chances because God gambled on us and, and he showed grace and mercy. Uh, but then too, I also believe once you give people that those chances, you should also uh, accept it for what it is and not for what you want it to be. Because uh, some people, no matter how many chances you give them, uh, they're going to continue to do what they've done. Uh, it's, just not in the, it's just not in them at this time to change. Or uh, who knows how long it will be, you know, we don't know. But I believe I believe in second chances and I believe we should give other second chances. But do I also believe that there's a point where we have to acknowledge uh what's what what's really going on. All right. I believe that um, our second chance is wasted. For some people, they are. I mean, they do waste them. 
some people waste second chances, you know, uh, if it's uh, the opportunity is given. But, I mean, you know, second chances is a God's, you know, I mean, from, from a biblical standpoint, uh, God showing grace and mercy as we should do the same, uh, even though most of us are reluctant to give second chances or even third chances, whatever the case may be, but people can waste them. You know, it's just like you can give, uh, we give our children opportunities to, uh, to do better in certain situations don't necessarily mean that they're going to do it. And they could waste those opportunities, you don't know, to gain or to be able to do something they wanted to do. You give them another opportunity to uh, get a second bite at it. And yeah, they can waste it. So our opportunities, second chance is wasted. You can waste them. Yes. But, um, you know, those are just opportunities. Good stuff, good stuff. I just, I mean, I, I, I'm wanting us to begin to think about this second chance thing because I want us to be reminded, just like Sean had already brought out that, you know, God gave us many chances and brought, uh, Minister Kelly said the same. He's given us so many chances, but it seems sometimes that we get to the end of our rope all of a sudden when God didn't get to the end of his. I mean, and I'm not saying we're God. That's not what I'm saying. And I know we have to recognize that uh, where we have to stop and allow God to pick up. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. But I think sometimes we give up sometimes a little too quickly. And But I wanted to share as I begin to talk about this story, because as we look at the different responses it reminds me that, guess what? Sometimes this is the response that you're going to get when you allow someone or you give them a second chance. So as we look at this story, we look at um, Abinatha. First, he was exiled when he really should have, he deserved death. Who does that remind us of? That reminded me many times of how Jesus sacrificed his life. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give you a second chance. So even though he was deserving of death, he was actually exiled. In other words, he was put in a place that was not his home and told to stay there. And so he did just that. And that actually saved his life. Now, he did some things. He sowed some seeds in his life for his uh, for David for Solomon's father, David, and that allowed him this extra chance or second chance instead of uh, his what he deserved, which was of death. And then we look, we look at Mr. Mr. Joab. As Joab began, I mean, he's a fighter. He's a soldier. We got to keep these things in mind when we wonder about a person's personality. And so when Absalom ran out ran david off and all of those things joab was mad about that and so he never did he, i don't think he really got over it and i believe that's why he went ahead and killed epsilon and he also was a man of honor to a certain extent and what i mean by that certain things that looked like it was disrespectful to the kingdom he felt like he was the one that was put on this earth to make sure that those disrespectful things did not occur so now look at what he does. Now Joab gets the news. Some get ready to go down. It's getting ready to go down, y'all. And so when Joab gets the news, it's getting ready to go down on his behalf that he wasn't going to be able to make it. And he didn't show mercy and grace to others. Now it's his turn. So where does he run to? He runs to the altar. So and when, when it talks about grabbing the altar, the horns of the altar, that is actually a sign or it is, is a, a thing that they did back then, which was a sign of asylum or a protection or a place to a refuge, which they can honor or they didn't have to honor. But in most cases, they would honor that. But he was running from the king. So, I mean, you know, what, what you going to do with that? But the same mercy and grace he didn't show to others was the same mercy and grace he wanted shown to him. Y'all see that? 
he was asking for something that he wasn't willing to give to somebody else. This is why it's important for us as Christians, whatever I'm asking you to do, I need to be willing to give that same amount of, of, of care to that thing. I can't ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do. That's not right. And so he was asking for forgiveness. He was asking for refuge. He was asking for asylum, but he wasn't willing to do that for Epsilon. He killed him right on the spot. He was hanging from a tree and just cut him out. I'm just saying. So whatever you're asking, you need to be willing to do the same thing. You need to be in the mindset that you can, okay, whatever I'm asking you to do, I'm willing to do that. Being an, a living example, a living epistle uh, for God's people. And as he began to, to, to look at the, so he so he thought he was in a place where where he didn't, he what he he's like, man, if I can be, have y'all ever been in a this situation and you be like, man, if I could just if I could just make it to this safe house, or if I could make it to this place, and and and, and I'm gonna be all right. And, and I, I believe Joab was in his mind. He was thinking, you know, sometimes I disrespect God. I I don't know if he did or not. I'm just using my Holy Ghost mind, you know. But right now I need God, so I'm gonna run over here to this altar, and I'm a hope God gonna help me, right? And so as he began to think about these things, he went to the altar, right? And then he tells he tells him, hey, you know, I'm not leaving here. And so he, he gets back to the king. The king said, oh, oh, you out of here. You, you just didn't know it. Sometimes our behavior can be so devastating. It can be so, so bad. And then you got to think about this. Did he ever ask for forgiveness? I'm going to ask that question. Do you feel like when... Joab went to the altar. Did he ask for forgiveness? Or was he still just being selfish? Y'all talk to me. Somebody say something. Do I need to repeat the question? Um, so that's my actual question. Go ahead, go ahead. Actually got me. I think. Mm. I, you would want to hope considering he's going there because he's looking for refuge because he's looking for safety because hopefully he's looking for the comfort of God but um, he, of all the actions that he's taken as being the commander of the army personal actions is never documented or seem to be as though he has forgiven uh, or ask for forgiveness. Um, in regards to him being at the altar, it just seems like um, him just trying to find a safe place. Like back in the day, TJ Hooker, all those type shows, Hunter, um, all the criminals would run to the church and hide there so they wouldn't be hurt or kill. So that's what it reminds me of, honestly. But no, I don't think he asked for forgiveness. Good stuff. Anybody else? And then you got to also remember, if I remember correctly, back then the altar, then you supposed to put something on it. I mean, I don't know how they did. They, you know, repent and ask them for forgiveness. But from my understanding, the altar was built for them to even put a cow or something on it or burn it or something. So I'm not sure if he did that. And I don't think he did. Or if so, it wasn't documented. Amen. That's a good point. Anybody else? I got somewhat of a long winded response. <laughs> Absalom, I'm not Absalom, but uh, Joab. You might want to put Who you thing down, bro? Who you yeah, thing? Joab, Joab was. I, I used to think that Joab did a lot of things uh, on behalf of David because of his. He wanted David to prosper, but you know, in hindsight, looking at a lot of it, he did a lot of those things for himself. David didn't want Absalom killed, 
And if he didn't kill Absalom, uh, Absalom still would have been in Absalom's mind the heir to the throne. Which means if he, when David dies, uh, Joab is the one that's going to have to deal with the same guy who he went to war against. Uh, so I think his his getting rid of Absalom is securing his own future, just as when Abner and uh, uh, Amasa, I think it was, one of them were, both of them were um, leaders of armies, and one of them was uh, given a position by David. And um, now they were brothers for one, the, what, he killed two brothers is what it was. And, um, but one of them was given a position and uh, Joab saw fit to get rid of him, you know, securing his own. Um, so a lot of things that Abner, I mean, Joab did, did not, didn't show any resemblance of God nature at all. And even times he did some things that were um, disrespectful to a degree to David. Um you know, when he told him to come claim this city, if you don't come claim the city, I will, which was, which was a thing of the time. But when you do that, you're almost trying to upsert his power, you know, and lifting yourself up. So, um, Joab had a lot of things coming to him. He had a lot of things coming to him. And as you said, it, the point, point, the fact that that is ironic that he goes to the altar seeking, uh, asylum to a degree but it was really you know um what they call it cities of refuge they used to have cities of refuge and that also were right, going to the altar you're seeking refuge from whatever punishment that you had coming and so as you said he didn't show these guys mercy he didn't show these guys any type of grace uh, he certainly didn't do what the king had instructed him to do on multiple occasions. So, um, yeah, he had a lot of things coming to him. And like you said, uh, over that over the course of time, he could have corrected those things with King David. You know? But he never did. Wow, this is some good stuff, y'all. This is good stuff. So, so the last little part that I want to share because see, we have people like Ab Abathon. He stayed where he was supposed to stay, right? Now, I want to give you just a little bit of small background. I know we talked about Shimei before, and I know we realized he was the one that was cursing David when he was getting ran out. Uh, he was he was kin to Saul. And so he was cursing David, talking crazy, and then uh, uh, just just belittling him. And then I, and then when uh, David came back, he did similar things. So Shimeon had some things coming to him. But look what David did. I mean, look what Solomon did. Solomon said, he asked him pretty much, he told him, build, build your place where you're going to stay. He, he didn't kill him. He gave him another chance, a second chance, to get it right. And he told him, if you leave this place, I'm going to kill you. I mean, he didn't say it like that. Y'all read the scriptures. But he pretty much told him, if you leave this place, if you leave this place of refuge, basically, he put Shimei on house arrest. Y'all know what house arrest is, right? Okay, y'all might not know. So let me, let me give you some clues to what house arrest is so they put this monitor on you okay right right they tell you what you can and cannot do right they they can have uh put your house and do some uh home searches and, and they want you to be employed so you can pay some fees you know pretty much they're making sure that you are being punished but they're giving you the luxury of being home oh he was under house arrest at some point throughout the scripture. And so house arrest secludes you and keeps you in a place so that they can watch you and monitor you. And so Shimei was pretty much on house arrest. 
So Simeon, instead of taking the second chance that he was given, now he go run after his slaves. Look how long it took him, y'all, though. So he was there doing good. See, see, sometimes people feel like if they're doing good for right now, they're going to continue to go, do good. But after three years, he said, the heck with this. I'm going to do what I want to do. So whenever you get into a place where you feel like you're going to do what you want to do, guess what? You got to deal with the consequences of your behavior. So Shimei left when they got his slaves, brought them back. And Solomon, it was told to Solomon, I'm thinking to myself, did you not know the king was going to figure out that you left? I'm just asking. You know, people sometimes act like they don't know they're being watched, but he should have known, right? And so as he began to, to it, it almost seems another part, it reminds me of kind of like what uh, Brother Vanoy brought out about uh, how Joel was kind of, he didn't say this, but I'm paraphrasing what he said. He said, Joel was kind of arrogant. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to do what I want to do. And he never asked for forgiveness. He running over there, talking about grabbing the hold of the altar. And then even in that, he still was being disrespectful. He still had the opportunity to still walk out and be a man. But he didn't want to do that. So, so Shimeon, he decided, he said, you know what? He said, so Solomon talked to him. He said, didn't you say? Didn't I tell you if you leave, I got you? Didn't I tell you if you do this, I got you? And so he said, and then when I told you that, you said it's all good. And guess what? Some people will get mad because we hold them accountable for what they said. Uh-oh, y'all didn't hear me. Some people get mad because we hold them accountable for what they said. So second chances, I don't feel like second chances are wasted, but I do feel like people waste their second chance. I feel like God gives us these chances and opportunities to do right. And sometimes we take advantage of that. And so even though I titled it, our second chance is wasted, I really believe that most people in general will take the opportunities that God has blessed us with and that we are blessed with on a regular basis through God. So my last question has to do with this. And this is one of the last questions I'm, I'm going to ask. When faced with the opportunity to do the right thing, I, I feel like Paul right now. When I go to do right, Evil is always present. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. So, so my question has to do with what does it look like and feel like to do just do the right thing when you're given a second chance? Somebody talk to them. I just truly believe that um, when God gave me not only a second chance, but as Andro was saying a lot of chances that I chose to do right. See, we have free will every day. Uh, you can do what you want to do. But I just truly believe that it's, I'm living in heaven right here on earth. I, right now, I'm living in the land of milk and honey. Um, and it gives me the opportunity to want to do right. It gives me to be able to walk up with the peace. I'm at to go off look, you know, off the subject a little bit. You know me, sis. But you know, what I'm saying is, is that with this second chance it was really for the fifth chance, because God is so great. Woo! He's so merciful that it became a time where I wanted to do right, and I'm continually trying to do right. Now, do I fall? Yes, because we're all like filthy rags. I'll never be like Jesus. And God knew that. So I stay repentful. I always repent. Three, four, five times a day I pray. I spend time with him. I need him. He's like my air, my water. The love that I never had, I feel it with him. And he's so fulfilling. Go ahead, Brother Gary. Go ahead and take care of this. Amen. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sucker says, uh, when I when I given the opportunity to do the right thing, I feel good when I do it. I, I realize that we we got choices, like Shanana say, and it's up to us to make that choice, the right choice, to choose the right, do the right thing. And when we do the right thing, it's something about the feeling that God gives us, the reward that God gives us from doing the right thing. I, I, I experienced that this week. I had an opportunity to do wrong, and I chose not to. And I felt good about it. And I just thank God for rewarding me with that feeling. Amen. Anybody else? Um, well, I'm reminded of Elijah on Mount Carmel when he said, if Baal be God, then serve him. If God be God, then serve him. So when we choose God over darkness, when we choose light over darkness, and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior in our hearts, uh, he illuminates our environment. Uh, he illuminates our lives. Uh, we begin to see things that we didn't ordinarily see. And he began to expose to us our surroundings. We can see where the snakes are. We can see where our friends are. We can see where we should go and where we should not go. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. He 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 shows us, he, he gives us, he's a, he's our paraclete. He's our helper. He's our provider. He, 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 he illuminates things. He shows us which way to go. So it's a beautiful thing when you allow God into your life and you accept him as your personal savior and you walk away from the darkness. When you walk away from that crowd that's, that's not headed anywhere, when you walk away from that crowd that's always telling you, uh, uh, let's go do this. Let's go break into the sub. Let's go, let's go uh, get involved in something we ain't got no business involved in. Let's go, let's go make a lick. When you walk away from them licks and you get you get on the right side and you get in on some of God's licks, that's the best lick you can ever get in on. Because guess what? It don't come in no time. You know, it, it's a blessing. I mean, he blesses you how he sees fit. So I thank God for those second chances. And I thank God for uh, allowing me, allowing me to be on his team, allowing me a, another opportunity because he didn't have to. You know he could he could have pulled he could have put the card right there when I was in my darkness and said you know what he's not gonna make it you know I, I, I'm gonna give up on it right now but he gave me another chance so I thank him for it so it's a beautiful thing when we uh, allow God to give us those second chances and we take advantage of those second chances. Amen. Um. I agree with Miss Shanano when she was uh, expressing that second chances feel like love. Um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, for people who wear glasses, or when you put your glasses on, you know, you can see, you feel good, you feel confident. That's what second chances can feel like. That's what God loves feel like. You know, every morning you wake up, it just it just brightens your day, like uh, Minister Keller said. I would like to add, if I could, that um I wanted to elaborate a little bit, like my brother was saying about rewards. Um, I was telling a guy two days ago he wanted me to come and get a room or something. I told him, "Oh no, I can't do that. I gotta first go pray, cause I don't know what I'm getting this room for. Cause you do remember that I'm not the old shun. <laughs> so then I had a female approach me through Facebook. So I'm like, what's up? Nothing. I don't even know you. What do you want? Well, she said, I want to send you a cash out. Ma'am, I don't have it. Because I know 
more than likely you don't even know me. <laughs> and if so, you know, pay it forward. So then I had another lady, she come to me and she said, well, I would like to use your page for my advertisement. I said, well, go ahead. She said, well, I'll tell you what, if you give me your email and um, your information, I can give you this little bitty code thing so you can get a percentage off if you want to shop with me. I said, ma'am, pay it forward. I said, I even paid for a person dinner the other day. Do you know the more you give, the more God will give back? Do you not understand what obedience is? I said, and not only that, you, I don't even know. <laughs> if you want to use my Facebook page and it's something positive to benefit you and your family, and I know that we're in a, well, they in a recession, but the righteous God taking care of. So it, well, I can speak on me because uh, I'm doing right. But not always, but you know, I still pray. So my point was to her was that I've learned that it was better to give than to receive. Because oftentimes, even though people would never remember, and I remember a while ago you was talking something about reciprocation. You didn't say that word, but you was meaning like this. Anyway, what I've learned is that if you learn to give and walk off, God never forgets. He don't sleep and he don't slumber. People may forget. They might not even do right by you. But guess what? God will give you tenfold just for that. And in fact, after I did what I did and I told her to pay it forward, she used my pay. Now, if it's there, I don't know. But I do know that God blessed me with a little bit of some, some. And that's what I love about being obedient because God, He is faithful. And for some reason, I feel like me and Him, we right here right now. I can pray and ask for some, and it appears right to that mailbox in my name. And I'm telling you, God is working it out. So, anybody that is doing the right thing like we are, I'm telling you, it's it's worth it. And I love this family here. To me, this is a praying family, and I'm going to stick with it because it's working for me. Amen. Amen. Brother Vanoa, you have any final thoughts and you want to press out? <clears throat> uh, the question was, what does it look like? Um. It looks like to me, uh, first off, would be an acknowledgement when they're doing the right thing with the second chance. They acknowledge, one acknowledges, it's not they, whomever it may be, acknowledges that they didn't do right with the first opportunity. And when you do right, the second thing is appreciation. Appreci appreciation for the opportunity given and so you make good on that opportunity. That's what it looks like. Um, and that's all I wanted to throw in there. Press out. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come before you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the word which you have given us, Heavenly Father. We ask that it finds, finds itself upon good soil and that you continue to guide us and your Holy Spirit guide us to all truth, Heavenly Father, and continue to work within us uh, and help us to be men and women that you have called us to be once again. Um, we are just so thankful just to be able to be in your presence, be able to learn from you, your ways, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, that you continue to be mindful of us, Heavenly Father, even when we're in the state of uh, our wickedness. Um, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have given us grace and mercy to be able to come before you, Heavenly Father, and ask forgiveness and be reconciled to you. We ask you to continue to be with those that are not here, those that are downtrodden. Uh, we pray for this country, uh, its leaders as well, that we may live a peaceful life, that we may continue, Heavenly Father, to, um, to be in the sweet spot of your blessings, Heavenly Father, as well, that we may be able to... Um, receive all that you have given us and all these things we ask and pray in the name of your mighty son jesus christ amen amen, amen. Okay, you got a question for us yeah i actually do have a question for you what's the question how are you May God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Love you guys, and there's nothing you can do about it. Talk to y'all soon. Yes, God is good. Yeah.
all the time.